Well, out of all their Armageddon scenarios which are out there, low fiber is probably not going to be on the top of that list. But seriously, can a low fiber diet actually lead to potentially the irreversible damage of an advanced civilization or culture? Well, yes. Especially now that our understanding what a microbiome is. And also especially at a time when we have antibiotics, antibacterial soaps, toothpaste, detergents, we are so hyperhygienic that we may be changing our biology, not for the better. So let us begin. In the study titled, Low Fiber Diet May Cause Irreversible Depletion of Gut Bacteria Over Generations. Citation title, Diet Induced Extinctions in the Gut Microbiota Compound Over Generations. Published in Nature, January 14, 2016. And I'll run through this first part real fast. The proliferation of nearly fiber-free processed convenience foods since the mid-20th century has resulted in the average per capita fiber consumption in the industrialized societies of about 15 grams per day, where our ancestors used to consume an average of 150 grams of fiber per day, which maintained a beneficial microbiota or flora in the gut. To proceed forward, and this is what the researchers said, and this is quite telling, and this is part of what may be a very innocuous form of Armageddon to a society. Once an entire population has experienced the extinction of key bacterial species, simply eating right may no longer be enough to restore these lost species to the guts of individuals in that population. Those of us who live in advanced industrial societies may already be heading down that path. I know, once again, it sounds over dramatic, but let's proceed forward. In the first generation, now they took some lab animals and they basically colonized them with human bacteria to see how things played out. To begin, within a couple of weeks, we saw a massive change. Remember, they had one group which had low fiber, another group had high fiber. So now we're talking the low fiber group. The low fiber intake mice harbored few bacterial species in the gut. More than half of these bacterial species numbers had dwindled by over 75% and many species seem to have disappeared altogether. So, let's boost up the fiber and see if these good bacteria come back. Here we go. After seven weeks, the mice that had consumed a low fiber diet were switched back to a high fiber diet for four weeks. The mice's gut bacteria profiles partly recovered probably due to an uptick in the abundance of some bacteria whose ranks had declined at undetectable levels during the low fiber intake. Still, the recovery was only partial. One third of the original species never fully recovered despite the return to a high fiber diet. And no such changes occurred in the mice on a high fiber diet, meaning they had no negative impact on their beneficial bacteria. But that was just generation one. We're talking generation one, just within a few weeks of these mice going a low fiber diet had that much of an impact. What happens if it's carried out over four generations? And this is something which epidemiology tends to look at because it's like this. For example, if you have a compass and you're going down a path and you're off one degree, yeah, initially that one degree deviation may seem very minor, but with epigenetics, often what happens as time goes on, that deviation becomes greater and greater as you head down the wrong path. To proceed, the real surprise came after mice had been bred and maintained to low fiber diets for a few generations. In their experimental confines, these mice were exposed to microbes only through contact with their parents, like us. Each successive generation's gut bacterial ecosystem declined in diversity. By generation four, the depletion had reached a point where nearly three quarters of the bacterial species resident in their great grandparents' guts appeared absent in their own, meaning they weren't there anymore after four generations. Even after these mice were put back on a high fiber diet, more than two thirds of the bacterial species identified in their guts of the first generation ancestors proved irretrievable, indicating extinction of those species by the fourth generation of fiber deprivation. Now, all of you know what good flora does to the body from improving mood, blood pressure, mental acuity, and so on and so forth. So a large percentage of these good bacteria never came back. Nature was not forgiving. To proceed forward, these findings hold major implications for humans, said the researchers. 
There are very few ecosystems where low species diversity is a good thing. There is no reason to think our gut is any exception. It is such a puzzle to the research now where we're heading. Listen to some of the solutions that they came up with. And this is actually the quotes in their research. Simple tweaks in our cultural practices, for example, their words, not mine, not washing our hands after gardening or petting our dogs, totally counterintuitive what we're normally taught, could be a step in the right direction. And steering away from the overuse of antibiotics certainly is. Yeah, imagine doing low fiber and antibiotics, but let's proceed forward. More extreme measures, because researchers really don't think that people are gonna change behaviors in regard to processed foods and, and basically fibers. Their possible solution is as follows. More extreme measures such as mass fecal transplants, we're talking over populations, would require large scale testing to make sure they are both necessary and safe. So, counting on the potential extinction of these necessary microbiota in our gut, which we really have no clue what it all does yet. All we know is we need it. If we don't have it, bad things happen. Uh, some crazy solutions may come up into the forefront in regards to this. If not, simply just include a good amount of fiber in your diet. Again, our ancestors had 150 grams per day. We'd be successful, probably we can get to 40 or 50. Simplest solution is eat well. Again, this is Ralph Turciano signing off. And I hope this information, although a little over dramatic, I hope it does help. Thank you.